Many of the plants here in our Asian vegetable garden are cool season type plants. And as we've told you lots of times before on our program, these are some of the easiest vegetables to grow. We grow them in the cool of the spring, and by the time the heat of the summer arrives, we're already done with them. We've already harvested them and uh, either enjoyed them on the table or uh, put them away for later use. Well, right here you can see we've already harvested some of the pak choy in our garden. We've cut some of the plants at the base. Just cut those away and uh, taken those to be used. Others, we just kind of harvested the, the tender center uh, parts of the plant. But either way, we've left some of the plant that will keep uh, producing a little bit more and prolong our harvest. Uh, Barbara Brown will be fixing a nice stir fry with our pak choy a little bit later on on the show. We've got some other Asian greens I'd like to show you, including a few Japanese mustard types. This one is called the Tatsoi Spoon Japanese Mustard, and you can kind of see how this plant gets its name. The leaves are somewhat, somewhat spoon-shaped, uh, maybe like a, like a big wooden spoon or something like that. But they make a very nice, low-growing, dense rosette of leaves that are uh, really great for soups and uh, salads and stir-fries. This plant is also very winter hardy. I've seen this growing in green in January up in uh, some of the international students' garden plots up on campus. Well, right back here are a couple other types of Japanese mustard. This one's called Osaka Purple, and it's a very, very showy plant. would make a nice ornamental planting. Now, this plant has a sharp, pungent taste, so for salads, it'd be best to use some of these, these younger milder new leaves, but the, uh, the older leaves can be used in uh, stir fries or, or steamed. The Osaka purple Japanese mustard is reported to have a little bit of aphid repelling quality. This Japanese mustard we've grown before here at our studio gardens. This is the Mizuna Japanese mustard, and it's got these very finely cut, almost ferny type leaves that have a very mild uh, scent and uh, taste, but most of these, or both of these two Japanese mustard varieties, we got the seed from the Seeds of Change garden catalog out of New Mexico. Well, in addition to our Asian vegetables we have in this garden, we've got some of the more traditional American food crops in the raised beds here at our studio gardens, in, including our strawberries. These are really starting to ripen up. We're getting some really tasty uh, strawberries from these plants. We'll keep harvesting these so those new fruits will keep developing, keep coming on. Now, it's important to keep the strawberries well watered as those fruits are developing. They need about an inch of moisture per week. So if we're not getting the rainfall, we need to be out here with our soaker hoses and uh, make sure that these plants have plenty of moisture to produce those fruits. Well, we've got our tomatoes planted right back here in this raised bed. We've got the cages around them to help support them. And a little bit later on, on our program this season, we'll tell about the uh, different varieties we've got. We're also doing some uh, growing of some really neat cantaloupe on this structure. We've got some really nice heirloom varieties of cantaloupe. We'll be showing you those later on as well. We've got Swiss chard planted in this raised bed, and you'll remember, remember last year we had our, our carrots planted in these drain tiles that we filled with sand. We had a little bit of compost in the top and got some really nice elongated carrot roots. This year we've uh, got some parsley in here as sort of an ornamental effect. Well, speaking of ornamental edible plants, I'm really starting to like this plant we've got right here. We've got a little bit of caterpillar damage, but still, these are beautiful plants. This is a type of kale. It's called Nero di Toscana, or the black kale of Tuscany. And it is an heirloom kale that uh, was grown and utilized a lot in the Tuscany, Italy area. The uh, other name for this plant is the black palm tree kale, but I just, I just love these these bluish gray leaves that the plant has. It also has a very crinkled or uh, blistered effect to the leaves. This is what we call the savoy type leaf. Looks similar to some of the savoy types of spinach. In fact, you can use this plant as a substitute for spinach 
in recipes. Now the ancient Egyptians used to believe that kales had magical properties, that uh, they could even cure hangovers. But uh, I, I don't know if that's true or not, but I really like the plant for its uh, nice architectural and ornamental and edible effect in the garden. Well, right down here we've got some beets that uh, need a little bit of thinning. Or excuse me, these are radishes. This is the rose heart radish. And once the, uh, the fruit develops, or excuse me, the root develops, it'll be about four to five inches in diameter and still mild. So we, uh, we can't wait till those get large enough to where we can come out and harvest some of these rose heart radishes. But I'll just thin some of these so they'll have more room to develop. But later on on our program, we'll, we'll harvest some of these, we'll cut them open, and you can see that nice red pinkish center of the rose heart radish. <music> 